Inspired by the 8-bit classics that we used to see from Capcom and Konami, Shovel Knight proved to be a massive hit when it was first released back in 2014. In fact, for a lot of people, Yacht Club's popular platformer is the very first thing they think of when they hear the words indie game. For me, I liked Shovel Knight when it was first released, but I haven't kept up with the spin-offs and the DLC. Perhaps that's why I was totally caught off guard when Shovel Knight Dig showed up out of the blue. This is the newest game in the 8-year-old franchise, coming out this week on the Switch, Steam, and Apple Arcade. And while the release may have caught me off guard, I was not surprised to discover that this is yet another great playing action game that just oozes style and charm. This is my review of Shovel Knight Dig. This is a brand new adventure starring our favorite shovel-wielding hero who jumps into action after his peaceful camp is burglarized by that dastardly drill knight and his evil digging crew. This sends us on a new type of quest that sees the knight tunneling deep under the earth's crust in order to fight monsters, battle bosses, survive traps, open treasure chests, and if all goes well, recover all the stolen loot. And just in case that doesn't sound daunting enough, you're gonna have to do all that without dying, because running out of health will send you right back to the top of that pit, forcing you to start the adventure over from the very first level. In case it wasn't plainly obvious from the setup, this is not your typical Shovel Knight adventure. Sure, a lot of the gameplay elements are the same, but it's clear that this spin-off has been inspired by everything from SteamWorld Dig to Spelunky to Downwell. The result is a ridiculously addictive adventure with procedurally generated stages, all kinds of power-ups, and multiple paths, assuring that no two playthroughs are ever the same. This is Shovel Knight like you've never seen him before, complete with new friends and foes, vertically-minded stage designs, and a few major surprises that'll shake up how you view the knight and all of his friends. The first thing you need to know is that this is not gonna be as easy as it sounds. In theory, all you really have to do is survive a handful of stages, defeat a predictable boss, and then move on to the next part of the descent. Of course, it's not gonna be that simple. You'll quickly find that just surviving the first few levels is a major challenge all on its own. Thankfully, as you spend your time trying to understand the ins and outs of this hostile underworld, you're going to be earning gems that you can use back on the surface in order to make your future runs a little bit easier. You see, a lot of this game comes down to taking advantage of the shops, treasure chests, and hidden rooms that are sprinkled throughout the various vertical stages. This will allow you to extend your life bar, upgrade your trusty shovel, increase the amount of special items that you can hold at once, and so on and so forth. There are also items that will give our heroes some much needed perks, such as walking on spikes, jumping a little bit higher, walking through fire without getting burned, and a lot more. Survive long enough and the Shovel Knight will become a real contender, no matter how hard the levels get. But remember, if you die, all the progress, the perks, and items, they all go away. Now, when I say that you have to start over from the beginning, that's not entirely true. As you beat the bosses and uncover deeper parts of the underworld, you'll be able to unlock a quick warp that'll allow our hero to skip tremendous amounts of the adventure. That's good if all you want is a change of scenery, but it comes with some real serious downsides. The biggest issue is that you missed out on several easier levels full of perks and items that you can pick up and buy. You're starting these much harder levels with a big disadvantage, so you'll always feel like you'll need to catch up just to stand a chance. Given to the wrong developer, all of this would be too repetitive to be enjoyable. Thankfully, the people behind Shovel Knight Dig do an excellent job shaking things up, not only with the amount of different enemies and obstacles they throw at you, but also the different paths. A good example of this is after you beat the first boss, the mushroom-capped Spore Knight. It's here where we're given the option to either fight through a fire pit of a level, or take on a more water-soaked stage. 
Even when the decision isn't that vital, you'll still be forced to pick between stages that'll have more gems, or maybe one that has easier obstacles. I also really like the way that the story plays out. Every time you make a little progress in the game, something big happens back on the surface. At first, it means the introduction of a bunch of new characters moving in and out of the campsite, but you'll start to notice that there are actually major things happening in the background, slowly filling in the fun and thoroughly satisfying story. Look, it's obvious that this type of game is usually more about the action than it is the storytelling. So I appreciate the amount of work that's gone into introducing us to new characters, showing us some familiar faces, and adding just enough new twists and turns to keep you engaged in the adventure. That said, Shovel Knight Dig does suffer from a lot of the problems and cliches that have plagued this particular genre. While I applaud the game for adding a lot of much needed variety, there's no doubt that it still becomes repetitive after a while. Yeah, you're gonna visit the mushroom mines a few too many times in an effort to collect gems and unlock the bonus perks. Thankfully, the later stages make up for the initial repetition, what with the nice change of scenery, enemies, and coloring. And speaking of enemies, the boss fights in Shovel Knight Dig are surprisingly awful. We fight small bosses with predictable attacks, all of which can be taken out with just a few hits of your special secondary weapon. I was able to win a few of these fights simply by saving up my special attack and unleashing six of them in a row. These poorly thought out battles often feel more like an afterthought, and they are by far the weakest part of this game. Between the randomly constructed stages and the game essentially hitting the reset button on you every time you die, this type of game is often polarizing, and I'm not sure that this specific throwback platformer is going to change anybody's minds. That said, Shovel Knight Dig has a great presentation and is overflowing with style and personality. From the colorful cast of characters to the silly power-ups to the beautifully detailed locations, fans of this style of action game will certainly dig what this Shovel Knight installment is offering. Shovel Knight Dig is a delightful and deceptively challenging new action game that is equal parts Mega Man and Steam World Dig. Randomized stages, clever power-ups, and a full cast of kooky characters await you on this adventure to dig your way through the underworld and bring the Drill Knight to justice. Although a bit repetitive and occasionally frustrating, the spin-off benefits from having great gameplay, gorgeous pixel graphics, and a fun soundtrack. Too bad the bosses stink. But even though it never breaks free of the genre's cliches, Dig proves to be another worthwhile entry in the ever-growing Shovel Knight franchise. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now, here's the question I have for you. What's your favorite video game spinoff? There are a shocking amount of video game spinoffs, especially when it comes to fighting games. I'm pretty sure that every major fighting game franchise had its own spinoff. Even a few of the smaller fighters did. I mean, there was an Eternal Champion spinoff for crying out loud. Anyway, let me see your picks in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back shortly with more reviews and the next episode of Die Hard Game Fans Best and Worst. While you wait for that, I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.